this series is amazing. Um, I love how it really, you know, this is about investigating, but also there's a mystery, there's tension, there's so many different things that's built upon us. So what I really wanted to know was when breaking down a script and first seeing it for the first time, what were the important elements that stood out for you that makes for great imagery with this series? Well, you know, I, I like to delve into character a lot when we're breaking down scripts. And um, I had the good fortune of uh, my first episode for the series, um, episode two, was done with the director, Domaine Davis, who also did the pilot. So that was, I thought, um, really beneficial because she had a really great grasp of what the story was all about. I mean, she helped set the whole tone of the series. And so I had that that wonderful uh, resource and, and uh, uh, benefit of all of her knowledge. Um, but yeah, I really like to get into it with the director and, and kind of explore the subtext of, of what characters are going through, um, the psychological profiles, especially in a show like this that has such complex issues of trauma being dealt with by all the main characters. Um, and of course, um, a dark secret for uh, Shinola's character. Um, so I kind of like to think about what they're going through, both on the surface level of what they're trying to project to the world and what they're really dealing with underneath. And if there is a way to highlight that with lighting and composition, um, you know, I incorporate those kinds of elements. So, you know, contrast and light and dark and shadows, I think, are a big part of um, what kind of help to um, accentuate what Shinola's character in particular is going through. Right. And what I do love is that that seems to be the metaphor of the show is the darkness and the light, you know, also dealing with a lot of secrets. My thing is you can also deal physically in darkness. You know, there's a lot of uh, under people are underground other than basements or and other other aspects. My question is, how exactly do you go about lighting that? We deal with a lot of different hues and a lot of different textures, especially with people coming in of different kind of skin tones as well. So how does that work what exactly do you use or techniques that you follow hmm. through well i mean as far as different skin color and tones and and how to light different people together mm -hmm. that's just something that i think um you know I, I had the good fortune of from early on having done a lot of different kinds of projects um and worked with a lot of people of color in front of the camera and so um you know i i can't say that there's any specific way that i i sort of approach it other than I think all the accumulated knowledge that I have both as in my career as a DP, but also when I was starting out earlier as an AC and working for other DPs and kind of seeing how they lit things, all that kind of comes into sort of what makes you do what you do. But, you know, they always say like you take 10 different DPs and give them a scene to light and they'll light it 10 different ways. Um, but um, I don't know if that's really answering your question, but that's sort of the first thing that came to my mind. I, I don't know if you want to yeah, rephrase yeah. or probe a different version of that, but. Well, that also dealing with, also we're dealing with different light as well. Um, like I said, there are a lot of scenes where you, a lot of people are being found in the dark. A lot of scenes are being filmed also in the dark. Can you talk about the lighting process of, is it by location that really determines what the light will look like as opposed to say, here's the woods as opposed to here's maybe a basement or underground bunker. Yeah, I mean, so I always approach it initially, um, both with having broken down the script and what's going on in the story, I, I approach it very much with having the location in mind and what the, the naturalistic way that something would be lit in a location like that would be. That's the starting point. And then, you can depart from that quite a bit, depending, especially um, in flashbacks or things that become a little more psychological in nature, you can kind of enhance things or go a little bit beyond reality per se. But I always like to start with a naturalistic standpoint first. So if we're talking about an interior, I think about windows and I think about the practicals within the environment. And um, so, for example, I was thinking earlier about the uh, the um, barn house where in the flashback she's held as, as a 16 year old um, young girl. And in that environment, you know, the windows were all boarded up. So the windows aren't really heavily available as a source of lighting, even in the daylight scenes. We did do some heavy shafts of light, which I think was very dramatic with a little bit of atmosphere to show those shafts coming through the slats or the slits between the windows. But um, we couldn't really use that as a primary source the way I might if, if they were normal windows in a house. So, um, you know, you start with what, what you have. And, and so in an environment like that, largely it was the practicals that motivated the lighting. 
the chandelier over the dining table or, um, you know, barrel light bulbs in various areas um, to highlight that. Right. Every character has its own personality. You know, do you find that with photography, with photography that that brings out their personality more? Is that the goal or is it really just about the purpose of the scene? Um, no, I think I think you you want to try to have an identity for for every character in a way. And if you can reflect that with lighting and or lens choices and composition, um, I think uh, we always try to find ways to visually highlight the things that are happening, you know, subtext and uh, and also on the surface. But um, <clears throat> so, yeah, to that end, I think every character has their own like Mark Paul Gosler, for example, in his captivity sequences. He's a pretty dark character, of course, and there's a lot of psychological gamesmanship going on there. So in his environment, I try to play a lot with the windows for hard side lighting, um, also the practical lights and, and working that as dramatically as possible. But a lot of contrast between the light and the dark within those frames. Um, so, yeah, that's just one example of how I try to approach certain things. Is the goal to weigh the subtext and what we see on screen on the surface level equally? Oh, that's a tough question. I mean, I don't know that you can always necessarily achieve that, but um, if and when given the opportunity, yeah, I think you try to. Um, you know, when a, car a character is going, when a character is lying or, you know, having some subterfuge, if you can convey that with lighting and or just lens angle and height, for example, you can accentuate certain things and, and um, I like playing around with that. I like playing with reflections too, which sometimes if you, and in Mosley and Associates, which has so many glass surfaces, if you can play around with reflections and kind of have one person within a shot, let's say of Shinola, one of the other characters reflected in the background in addition to the over, I think it's kind of interesting sometimes to play with that when there's a little bit of a cat and mouse thing going on. Right. I was wondering how much do you have a say in how the set is dressed? Because if you want to get a certain image, does that <laughs> impact how they would dress that scene? Um, in the set dressing, did you say? Yeah. So, you know, uh, quite a bit. I mean, it really depends. In the case of a uh, show like Found, you know, I came on after the pilot had been shot previously. Mm -hmm. So some of the sets had already been designed and kind of pre-dressed. However, there's always changes within a set. Um, like in the in the farmhouse where she's kept captive, there were many changes that we did throughout um, the season. And also because from the pilot to when we began, certain props simply weren't available any longer that were available when they originally did the pilot. So there are minor changes here and there, but we always do dress and try to dress to help in various ways um, for, for practically shooting the location. So for example, <clears throat> sometimes just a big blank white wall is something that you want to break up and, and work with the art department and certainly help to, to make it visually more interesting so that you can shoot in all the different angles and not sort of have a really boring or flat kind of background. So, yeah, I mean, we, that's a big part of scouting and, and uh, tech scouting as well. Also with that, I was wondering, um, when you're going through the script and then you're breaking down everything, how much does, well, can, does each scene really reflect on which camera you're going to use? Or do you like to just say use one particular camera for all of the scenes? <clears throat> um, well, we, we, we shot the whole series, uh, you know, again, excluding the pilot, but but we shot the rest of the series all on one camera system primarily. Mm -hmm. However, um, I did use some ancillary car uh, cameras for certain sort of tight locations or specialty shots or kind of stunt kind of sequences. But what I did do was we, we had, um, I shoot a lot with primes. I tend to like primes over zooms uh, for a variety of reasons. One is optically, they're, they tend to be a bit better. Two, they're lighter weight and help to maneuver the camera in ways that are harder to do with a bigger zoom on there. And three, they tend to be faster, so you can shoot in lower light and um, and really kind of accentuate the out of focus areas if that's what you're going for in a scene. Mm -hmm. So um, I had two different sets of primes on the show, and I used, for example, for the flashback sequences, we used a different set that was just slightly softer in character and didn't have the same kind of lens coating. So it cr it treated flares and certain highlights differently than our main set of lenses. Um, so, but usually I will use lenses and or filtration. And, and in-camera stuff with my DIT uh, in coloring versus uh, necessarily different cameras. Are you driven by the emotion of the scene compared to say what's actually uh, going on and how everyone is framed? 
I, I think that's always a factor. I mean, if if the scene is a is a heavily charged scene emotionally, yeah, I mean that's the the primary thing you want. You kind of try to determine what the primary thing is about the scene, and if it's a really emotionally charged, you know, deep thing, yes, that will be the driving factor in in a lot of choices. Um, so I, it's not a rote thing. It kind of depends on the given scene and what's happening. Sometimes it's just a procedural scene that's giving you a piece of information factually that's important down the line but isn't necessarily emotionally heavy. So um, yeah, I guess it's, it's scene by scene. It's sort of dictated by what's going on in the, in the script and at that point in the character of the arc, uh, the arc of the character. Wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.